guys, let's check out McDonald's. It's been a long time since I've been here. Hello guys, I'm happy to show that McDonald's is working again. It's a long line. It's even more crowded than normal. And McDonald's is always crowded, but today, because it's snowing outside, it's even more crowded. So the Big Mac combo was 152 Grivna, which is just over four dollars, four dollars and fourteen cents. How much would it be where you guys live? So McDonald's has been closed in Ukraine since the war started on February 24th of this year, and just reopened about a month ago. And it is more popular than ever. Meanwhile, in Russia, they have reopened under Tasty Period. So just bear with me, but this is the. Kuzn Itochka, or tasty, and that is all, or tasty dot, period. Now, now the first thing we're greeted with obviously is the touch screen, and they've got the Dobra Cola now. So their drinks that were previously Coca-Cola uh, products are now Dobra Cola. It's got the Mont Blanc burger combo, uh, plenty of choices, and just like that. My first McDonald's since the uh, the war started. It's been a long time coming. Honestly, I was really looking forward to coming back to McDonald's. I wanted to make a big deal out of it, celebrate, really enjoy it. But that was probably the most rushed McDonald's I've ever had in my life. Uh, meeting someone in 20 minutes, so I wanted a quick bite to eat. And it's McDonald's right here. But it's so crowded in there that there's like literally nowhere to sit. sit. People are sharing tables. I ended up sharing with three random people. And it was just kind of uncomfortable to be honest to, to sit there and film. So I'm glad McDonald's open. Uh, but definitely it's, uh, it is what it is right now. It's fast food. It's one of the first only things that's open. Uh, one of the only things that most people can afford as well. And Friends Food Center. So that's it guys, that's my McDonald's experience for the first time in nine months. So I've always wanted to come to this cafe. I've never, actually never been here, but it's pretty cool. And they have power right now, it's nice. Okay. So we stopped in for what is, it, what is it called? Sherniki? Uh, Sydney. Yeah, this is with nut butter and ma 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 Cheese. Mascarpone. Cheese. Mascarpone. It was very good. Oh. Inside the restaurant. <laughs> I hope you guys can see me, but you are without the power again, as uh, often. Someone trying to make some tea. In the candlelight. Filtered water and where's my matches? It's kind of hard to see uh, anything when it's dark, but my Ukrainian matches. And, uh, I'm gonna open the window just a little bit so I don't get current dioxide poisoning. I'm gonna take everything. Well, actually, I don't need a strike it. I can just light it here, I guess. Is that not it? Should be it. Of course, I didn't uh, stay lit. Let's try it again, guys. Here we go. Hopefully that stays on. Did you see that, guys? I just randomly turned off. Oh, shit. Let's try again.
Maybe it was my window being open. Yeah, but that should be okay, right? Okay, take two. Hopefully in 10 or 15 minutes, I'll have uh, hot water for some tea. I probably shouldn't have put the, the matches here, but oh well. <laughs> All right, I guess while we wait, I'm gonna prepare some tea. This is chamomile. And I have this little, uh, this little French press, which makes just uh, perfectly two or three cups of, of tea. So you guys might be wondering, why am I sitting in relative darkness with just a candle when I can have this bright LED lights? And it's because it's super bright and annoying. And it's like, I mean, I have some other LED lamps like this one. I guess I can turn off this. Okay, so this would be like halfway between and this could be a kind of bright room. But honestly, this white light at night, especially when everything else is so dark, and like it's not like a nice feeling like on your eyes. I'd rather just have some candle light. And to be honest, it's it's bright enough um, just to kind of see what's happening, like to sit in a, in a kitchen. I mean, I know my house, so I know where everything is. I can go to the bathroom in the dark. Uh, and it's not pitch black. There's like these two tea light candles. I I swear it doesn't look like it in the video probably, but it's enough to feel cozy, but also be able to kind of like, you know, get by. And that's why in uh, the other clip the other day when Brandon was over and he was cutting uh, pie in the dark, it wasn't that dark. It looked way darker in the in the video. So as you can see, we have no uh, electricity, but we have good company. We have homemade pie. <laughs> yes, ho homemade. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's a secret. Yeah, of course. With only the best money. <laughs> but actually, it's very cozy, guys. I, like, I'm, I'm not kidding, you guys. I, I'd rather be here right now in the dark with these guys sitting here in Ukraine than be anywhere in the world. Like in real life, it was still dark, but you can see what you're cutting. You're not going to cut off your finger. But um, I mean, that's the thing about cameras. Either it makes everything look way brighter or sometimes you're like, oh, it doesn't look that dark there. Johnny looks really bright. Well, that's the uh, the camera. Uh, or it makes things look way darker. And that's just kind of just how it is. I'll turn off this uh, LED light because that's too bright. That's better, but still it's not like a nice light. And then I hate it. When I press it again to turn it off, it does this, which is so annoying. It like triggers like epilepsy I don't even have. I wish that wasn't a uh I wish that wasn't a thing that you had to go through. I'm gonna say that. This is much nicer. I definitely shouldn't have put those uh matches in there now I have like a little fireplace going on accidentally. But it looks like the water might be boiling actually. You can see the smoke coming up. I don't think I can see it. It just started to boil. All right, it's been boiling for a few for a minute, so let's turn that off. Cool down the uh, the water a little bit. And just pour it over tea. I feel those little matchsticks burning there, slightly dangerous. At least it's a, a big candle holder <laughs> and it's in my kitchen, so I'm keeping an eye on it. But yeah, there should be some nice, uh, nice chamomile tea for a, uh, a nice restful, peaceful night, hopefully. So this is how a normal daylight candle is supposed to operate. 
And this one's going insane. Let me go check what the hell is happening. I can't believe three little matchsticks create that much fire, guys. I kind of assumed it was like something was boiling over, but there's nothing here to burn. Here, I'll put this. Fuck, it's hot. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Let's hope uh, this doesn't catch fire on something. Don't do not do that, guys. Here's a uh, pro tip. Don't throw matchsticks in a tea light candle. Or I guess do do it if you want to create a bonfire in your house, but just be warned. That's not good. Look at that. Is that glass going to explode? That's not good, guys. I hear like some crazy sounds. You know what? I feel like you think we should turn this off? I think we should cover this up. All right, back to the lights. That was uh, a bit scary. It started like making weird sounds. Oh my God, it's all burnt on the glass. Yeah, that's not good. Let's just be a normal human and uh, See if this works. Let's just do that, guys. I think uh, that's gonna be enough. So guys, today I decided to walk down her shadow to kind of just check out what's open on this side of the neighborhood. And what's funny is this row right here, which is closed to, to traffic, is the luxury shop neighborhood. For the war, this is where Gucci, Louis Vuitton, all of these high-end stores would be open. And you can see they boarded up during the war, but they've since decorated. And some of them are still open, actually. Let's take a look. So here's the Gucci, and this is just plywood to prevent uh, damage. And Gucci's lights are on. I think they may or may not be open, but Ferragamo is definitely open because there's security here and staff. I don't know this brand, but Louis Vuitton is definitely still closed. I don't know when shopping is going to fully return to Kiev, but there are people, you know, coming here. And I don't know, honestly, I don't know who's buying like Gucci right now during uh, this war, but it is open. Like, Welcome to the new Gucci, guys. When would you guys ever see this again? So here's another one of these stores. This has a bunch of Ukrainian words on there. Orobrimini, Chelaini, Diavri, Koti, Ukraina, To, Luvoy. Uh, Ukrainian love. I don't. I can't read up most of it, but it is kind of cool that they they have all this. And then as you come to the street, there's a couple stores that they either didn't bother to board it up at the start of the war, or they took it off, and they're fully functioning now. Look at this. So this is Brunello Cunicelli, and here we have Todd's, which is like a handbag and leather company, and these are all working. But let's go check out this fancy coffee shop. See if I get some Wi-Fi. Or maybe not this one, this one's too fancy. Let's see if the one next door is open. There are people inside that. So here's another one of these shops. And it looks like the Liebni is actually, is it open? I can't tell. It's always hard to tell when there's like kind of half lights on. It's weird, right? I think they're open. Let's uh, let's go. Mm -hmm. 
office of the day. So here's my office of the day. Really nice, beautiful view. The internet is working decently fast. Let's go in here. Well, that was a really nice time sitting there. I wouldn't mind coming back. It's a little bit of a walk for me, but especially in the cold, but it's okay. I think it was worth it. Guys, something happened last night that I want to get off my chest. So this whole, what, one or two weeks that I've been here, I've been trying to save electricity as much as possible. And, you know, that it's like little things like turning off the lights. Uh, I, like I haven't used my overhead lights. I've just been using like one light at a time. Uh, I've been trying to, you know, conserve and not use electricity whenever possible. So I haven't turned on anything unnecessary, like heated floors or the heated towel rack, even though it's, it's winter. Uh, I even unplugged my sound bar for my TV, just because I know the subwoofer uses um, a, a lot of power. And yesterday, while sitting in the dark, literally with just a candle, I hear this like super loud bass, like boom, boom. And it wasn't just like a car, because it was way too loud. And I was like, what is happening? And in my group chat with one of my neighbors, she's like, yeah, this night, there's a cafe next door that is turned into like a nightclub by having these like shelter parties. And that's how they get power. I don't know if it's through generators or they have like some special line because they're in the basement as a, as a shelter. But I went there to go see what's happening because it was so loud, it was shaking the whole building. And I'm not even like in the same building. I'm like one building over. And all I can imagine all the neighbors, all the babushkas, all the families, all the people who are actually like waking up early to go volunteer, all the people who are, you know, on rest from the military, all the little kids, all the old people, they're just sitting there in the dark with candles and they're hearing this like super loud bass, like a straight up nightclub, like 5,000 watts of, of, of power. And I go there and I, at first, I just I see a bunch of people and I was like, no, there's no way this is a an actual like nightclub party. I go in, there's a DJ, there's like crazy loudspeakers, there's hundred like over a hundred people, maybe 150 people, and I'm like, what is this? And they're like, oh, we're 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 raising money for the army, and I was like, how much are you raising? And they're like, oh, a, a portion of the ticket sales go to goes to the army. And I'm like, and I calculated, I'm like, you you probably donated a hundred dollars, and you probably made way more than that in alcohol sales and you're just doing this to have a party like just admit it like you're not like there, there's way easier better ways to to raise money for the army like i personally donated more money to the army than that whole party with over a hundred something people and i didn't disturb any neighbors and i was so pissed i was so like upset not only at just them disturbing like it, honestly it wasn't even just about me like if it was just me, I'm like, okay, whatever. Like, it wasn't that late, it was like 9 p.m. But it was the fact that we we're sitting in the dark and I know, not just like me, but like probably a hundred people in these like three buildings are sitting there with no electricity after a whole week of conserving it. And we just hear 5,000 watts getting drained by this, these speakers for no reason that people just wanna have a fucking party. And it really pissed me off. You know, when, when people ask like, why there's so many fighting age males that are Ukrainian just walking around Kyiv, my answer is always like, I'll oh, give them a break. You know, like not everybody's meant to, to go on the front lines. Not everyone has military training, which is true. You know, and people need to, you know, have a normal life and, you know, people need to work and do things. And I always just, you know, kind of brush it off. But when I see this bunch of hipsters that are like, literally you know 20 to 30 years old just getting drunk and having a party disturbing neighbors during this time that shit pisses me off it makes me want to just say you know what fuck it i'm plugging back in my sound bar i'm turning on my heated floors because whatever electricity i personally use is in a month is doesn't even compare to what they wasted last night So I'm back at home, it's 4 p.m. and the power finally came back on. 
even though it's supposed to come back on a one, the schedule for using too much electricity, namely those guys, that they've extended the load shedding. So it's supposed to come back on at one, it didn't until just right now. So I finally opened my fridge again to cook and I had to throw out like half of the food there, all the meat. It smelled so bad, guys. Like the, the food just went bad. Uh, I would have thought, I was hoping, I guess, that if I didn't open the fridge, it would stay cold enough, but it doesn't. I even put uh, some frozen bottles of water in the fridge, hopefully it will keep it cool, but yeah, the, the the meat was completely bad. The only thing that survived is uh, this mar pre-marinated pork suck snake. And I'm pretty sure just because it's some spices. It turns out that this is why the British went on all these like man hunts around uh, India and Sri Lanka is for spices, not just for seasoning, not just make food taste good, but because they didn't have refrigeration. It was a way to keep food fresh. And I didn't realize this really until now. I never really was in a position where food would go bad because we had no electricity. So luckily this survived. I'm gonna make a little plov. All right, so I think my plov is ready. Is it ready? It seems a bit wet. Let's try it. It is a bit too much water water on this one, but yeah, it looks all right. Not my best plow, but it'll do. All right, guys, as I'm editing, I hear the sirens go off. Normally, I completely ignore them because they go off pretty often now uh, in Ukraine. But today, there's, supposed to, there's a warning of a really big attack. Ukrainian President Zelensky is urging his people to brace for more Russian attacks. Moscow is escalating attacks on Ukraine's energy system, plunging entire cities into darkness. ABC News' Ines de la Quattara is live from Kyiv with the latest. Ines, Zelensky is telling people to brace for more attacks. What does that look like? How is the country preparing? Good morning, Diane. Yet yeah, Ukrainian President Zelensky warning people that Russia is gearing up for a fresh wave of attacks. In his address to the nation last night, he called on both defense forces and civilians to brace for that possibility. We know the Russian supply of weapons is dwindling, but Zelensky says that for as long as the Russians do have access to missiles, they will not calm down. Now, uh, Russia has been targeting the country's energy infrastructure, leaving millions across the country with no heat or power. So how are citizens coping as the temperatures there drop? Yeah, I mean, you can see behind me, Kiev is covered in snow. Like you say, temperatures continue to drop, and the Russians are really zeroing in on the Ukrainian power grid. So millions over the weekend left without power, without heat, without water. Uh, but it's really something to see. I mean, I just got to Kiev, and I was uh, surprised to see really a fully functioning city. Ukrainians are undeterred. In many cases, they only have access to a few hours of power a day, but they are powering through. We're seeing incredible images coming out of Ukrainian children going to school with flashlights, doctors operating in the dark, diners uh, at restaurants eating by candlelight. They are determined to stay put and, and keep going. And one resident telling a member of our team that, that they are willing to deal with no power, no heat, no water, as long as there are no Russians. So normally it takes about one or two weeks um, for Russia to restock on missiles after they, they, they fire. And it's been, I think, just over a week since the last one. Um, and there's been a warning that there was a lot of Russian planes near the border kind of getting ready. Uh, and they were waiting for a cloudy day because the air defense systems don't work as well. Um, so they can kind of hide through. So I hope that nothing too bad happens. But whenever Russia attacks, there's always something bad that happens, obviously. Always lives are lost and properties are damaged. Um, but let's hope and pray that it's not worse than normal. I don't know if that's a right way to say it. But yeah, until, I mean, Zelensky said it best. He said, as long as Russia has missiles, they will keep attacking civilians and Ukraine because nobody's stopping them. Thank <laughs> you.